Today on Vera's TV, we're gonna discuss ozone. Hi guys, my name is Ryan. Welcome to another week of the BRS 160, where every week we do our best to help you guys, members of the reefing community, enjoy your tanks and find new ways to explore the hobby. We do that by following the setup and progression of this 160-gallon reef tank. This week we're going to talk ozone in the reef tank. We'll explore what ozone is, what it's likely capable of achieving in the reef tank, what it isn't capable of, safety concerns, and some similarities to carbon, relationship with ORP, as well as some common methods of ozone implementation. Ozone in seawater is an extremely complicated subject. There is some known science on the subject, but how that science is applied to reef aquariums is up to a really healthy amount of debate. And for everything we think we know, there are 10 or more times as many unknowns. As aquarists, it's up to us to combine the science we do know with our personal experiences, best guesses, and the anecdotal evidence that provides to produce results we can share with each other and progress the hobby. Ozone in general, I'd consider something only advanced reefers implement. Reefers who are looking at some of the final frontiers in reefing and constantly perfecting their filtration system with the latest technology and for them the reason the hobby continues to be a hobby. For those reefers, ozone is likely a worthwhile investment of time and money. It might be worth some of the risks involved. For everyone else, save yourself the hassle, buy a bag of carbon and throw it in the sump because you'll receive more than half of the proven benefits associated with running ozone for a few dollars rather than a few hundred and with almost none of the risks. Regardless, if you plan on using ozone, one of the most fun components of reefing is learning about all the most commonly discussed reefing methods and technologies. The first step of understanding ozone is really just understanding what ozone is. Luckily, it's pretty easy to understand. Ozone is just a molecule made up of three oxygen atoms, whereas typical oxygen gas is made up of two oxygen atoms. Ozone for the reef aquarium is normally produced by using an electrical charge or to a lesser degree UV light to break O2 or oxygen gas into single oxygen atoms. Some of these single oxygen atoms will collide with other O2 oxygen gas to create O3 or ozone. Ozone's a very unstable molecule. It really wants to shed itself with that third unwanted oxygen atom and find stability as O2 oxygen gas. This is why ozone has the potential to be a very valuable component of a reef tank's filtration system. When ozone comes in contact with the organic compounds in the tank, it releases that third oxygen atom, which oxidizes and partially destroys or breaks it down into smaller molecules. Breaking these large organic molecules down into smaller, simpler molecules has a whole variety of potential benefits. Let's start with the ones that we can be fairly certain are accurate expectations. The first of which is breaking down the yellow pigments in the water and producing crystal clear pristine blue water. Unless you have an incredible water change schedule or other method of removing the yellow pigments, your water is likely a lot more yellow than you think. All the foods, fish poop, and many algaes release these yellowing compounds into the water. It's pretty much unavoidable. The easiest way to see them is to view the tank with the tank lights off. If you can, put a white piece of paper on the other side. It should be pretty easy to see. Even better, remove some water into a white bucket about the same depth as your tank. The water should be pristine blue like freshly mixed salt water, but it almost certainly is some shade of yellow. So why should you care about these yellowing pigments? Well, most reefers will agree that yellow hue has a pretty negative impact on the general perception of clarity, and the corals often look washed out or missing that color pop we all find desirable. More importantly, the water's yellow because the organic molecules are absorbing visible light, which reduces the PAR measurements and the light reaching your corals by a lot more than you might think. Since your corals depend on the light to survive, the light reduction could increase coral mortality, but more likely has the potential to brown them out as the corals increase the population of zooxanthellae within their tissue to compensate for the lower light conditions as a survival mechanism. Most of us have spent hundreds, if not thousands, to fill our tanks with awesome colored corals. No one wants to see them brown out over time. To give you a demonstration on this, we took some yellow water from one of the tanks here and added it to a bucket with the ozone generator hooked up to a hang-on skimmer. In just eight minutes, the ozone broke up all of the yellowing compounds, cleared the water up, and raised the PAR about 20%, from 128 to 151. It's a pretty impressive impact and easy to see why ozone or something similar is pretty attractive to many reefers. One thing I'd like to note here is the ozone isn't actually removing the color compounds. It's just breaking up the larger molecules which are capable of absorbing light into smaller molecules that don't absorb light. More or less, we're just changing the organics into a form which have fewer negative effects in the tank. 
Doesn't matter if we bought the best or the most budget conscious lighting option for the tank, for most of us it's important that we get the value we paid for in both intensity options and efficiency gains. The use of ozone will absolutely help you achieve that. Ozone will also break down other organic compounds like odors, which might be important to some reefers, but one other benefit is breaking down the organic toxins released by corals themselves. All kinds of corals emit toxins in the wild to help maintain their turf and protect themselves from predators and other corals. In the ocean, these toxins dissipate almost immediately. In the aquarium, presumably they just build up over time. There isn't a lot of hard data on the effects these toxins have in the reef aquarium and their potential accumulative effects, but it's pretty much universally agreed that one of the benefits of ozone is to break these toxins down into much safer compounds. This is where we start to venture into some of the theoretical benefits with reducing nutrients like phosphate and nitrate, as well as eliminating or reducing pest organisms like algae or cyano. I think it's important to note that ozone will have basically zero reaction with nitrate and phosphate themselves. There's potential to reduce nutrients, but it's largely theoretical and primarily based on trying to explain or understand many reefers' personal experience than it is proven science. Generally speaking, it's believed that ozone has the potential to quickly break down organics into forms which other organisms like bacteria can consume easier and could explain why reefers see reduced nutrients and correspondingly less nuisance organisms like algae and cyano. Keep in mind that there are a vast amount of reactions happening in the tank which we're completely unaware of, so this could be the result of something very different, and nutrient algae and cyano reduction certainly isn't experienced by every reefer who uses ozone. There are also some very commonly thrown around benefits with ozone, which I think are very likely not true, at least not in most common implementations. The first is the correlation many reefers make between UV sterilizers and ozone. is probably because ozone is an effective disinfectant in some municipal water supplies and some aquaculture implementations. It's likely some ozone manufacturer out there played a hand in spreading this misconception. It's also not helpful that most retailers group ozone and UV together as well. However, ozone and UV sterilization in the reef tank have about the same similarities as a heater and a dosing pump, which is none. By no stretch of the imagination is ozone to be considered an effective sterilization method in the reef tank. The ozone concentrations and dwell time required for sterilization are in the neighborhood of hundreds of times more potent than is commonly used in the reef tank. It'd be basically impossible to implement an ozone-based system with the proper concentrations, dwell time, and tank turnover for proper sterilization without some pretty devastating impacts on the rest of the tank. The other thing many reefers promote is increased skimmer performance. This one's almost purely anecdotal from everything that I've ever seen in the topic. It all seems like very intelligent people attempting to find plausible theories based on other reefers' experiences with their skimmers in ozone. The most common theory as to why it might improve skimmer performance is a small amount of ozone can potentially change the electrical charge of some of the molecules which can cause them to be attractive to other molecules and bind them together. These larger molecules are likely easier easier for the skimmer to remove. However, if you use too much ozone, you'll actually change the charge of too many molecules and actually shut down skimmer performance. So if you see a negative reaction in your skimmer, I suggest turning your ozone generator progressively down until you see the performance gains you're looking for. It's also very possible that many of the organics which were previously attracted to the air-water interface of the skimmer bubbles are now less attracted after the ozone changes the organic's electrical charge. There's no clear answer to the skimmer question, but rather than leave you with nothing, I'm going to throw my own anecdotal experience into the hat. I have personally never seen injecting ozone directly into a skimmer increase performance. In fact, quite the opposite. Anytime I've done this or seen it done on a hobbyist level skimmer, I've seen it completely shut down foam production. I have seen large commercial skimmers effective with ozone, but I can't comment on if it would be more or less effective if they didn't use ozone. I have, however, seen reef tanks which incorporate the ozone as a separate element where the skimmer still performs really well. Installations like this are generally ozone reactor of some sort or a skimmer which has been modified to perform as an ozone reactor no longer intended to collect skimmate. End of the day, I'd personally never incorporate ozone into my primary skimmer as a method of trying to improve skimmer performance because all I've ever seen is a decrease in performance. I would, however, feel comfortable implementing ozone or reactor or modified skimmer without many assumptions one way or another on how it will affect my skimmer's performance. This is where ozone gets a bit heavy with safety. Ozone is a dangerous gas, not only to your tank, but to your family as well. 
Ozone is basically the dangerous component of smog that covers all of our busiest cities and has a whole slew of health risks. Protecting your home and family from ozone ranks right up there with the importance of drip loops and proper wire management. There's some fairly simple ways to remove ozone and test for it, but it's important that you consider these things when incorporating ozone into your system. The ozone itself only lasts a few seconds in the tank, so there isn't a lot of concern about ozone in the tank water, but it does result in some other negative oxidizing compounds in the tank like bromate, which has the potential to cause issues. I have to say most of the information we have on this is at concentrations well above any reefer would use in the tank, but all the same, I would keep this in mind with your installation. It's generally understood that the use of activated carbon on the output of your reactor or skimmer and where the air leaves the equipment is satisfactory to reduce the ozone and the byproducts from the air to acceptable levels. We'll share some installation examples later in this episode. If you had a serious malfunction with your system, it's also possible that you overdose the aquarium with ozone and the resulting reactions could wipe out the tank. This is pretty similar to any other type of equipment malfunction like heaters, dosing pumps, and top-offs. This requires the same type of redundant safety measures to operate properly, but issues like this can be prevented easily. This is where I feel compelled to also discuss activated carbon because activated carbon has so many of the same benefits as ozone, but rather than break down organic compounds like color pigments, and coral toxins, activated carbon simply captures the organics in its internal pore network. When you remove the carbon, the organics are permanently removed from the tank. So in some ways, five bucks in carbon is better than your fairly expensive ozone implementation. There are a couple caveats to that. First, the thing about carbon is most of its effectiveness is in the first few days. After that, the pore network typically gets clogged with organics, tank debris, and a bacterial biofilm, meaning the clarity of the water is progressively going to rise and fall as you change the carbon. With ozone, the water will be crystal clear 100% of the time, and the light source of the corals in the tank is going to be stable all of the time. The second component to this is it's been shown that ozone and carbon have the potential to work better together at removing organics than alone, potentially removing twice as many organics than carbon alone. As to why this might be, it's hard to guess, but it's plausible that ozone changes organic molecules in a way that makes them easier for the carbon to remove. I find this to be pretty believable and even plausible because many of the organics we're trying to remove from the tank are fairly large, complex molecules, and many of the popular retail carbons based on bituminous coal are fairly inefficient at removing them because of their smaller pore structures. It's very possible there are other unknown reactions beyond that that cause the organics to be more attracted to carbon and therefore more efficient at removing them. Before we get too much further, it's important to understand the correlation between ORP and ozone. ORP is short for oxidation reduction potential. There's a healthy amount of debate on what ORP represents in the tank, and rather than make this a three-hour science lesson, I'm going to boil it down to the basics. For the purposes of the aquarium, ORP is basically a measurement of the ratio between organics and oxidants in the tank. For this purpose, organics representing the elements which pollute the tank, and the oxidants representing the things capable of cleaning up these polluting organics. The higher the ORP or oxidation reduction potential, the more likely it is the oxidants or cleaners in the water are outnumbering the organics or pollutants in the water. Adding powerful oxidants like ozone will almost always keep the ORP pretty high. For this reason, reefers commonly believe that ORP is a number that represents the cleanliness of their tank and water quality. Assumption being that ORP numbers near the top of the range suitable for aquariums are representing the water with the least organics or best water quality. Well, this isn't completely accurate. If your tank has a stable supply of food and livestock in it, the net result of this logic is likely true enough to be considered this way. However, keep in mind that the ORP number is a ratio, so a tank that gets fed a few grams of food a day and uses a tiny bit of ozone could likely have the same ORP as a tank that gets fed 100 grams of food and uses a ton of ozone. So while the ORP levels are the same for both tanks, the one getting fed a few grams of food a day will absolutely be cleaner with fewer organics or pollutants. For that reason, I would only consider ORP relevant to your own tank and not compare ORP with others for making a presumption about water quality between the two. I do, however, think in most cases the reefing community's assumptions on ORP are fair that raising the ORP in your own individual tank is likely resulting in cleaner water to some degree. All that said, where ORP really comes in is to control your ozone generator. If your ORP were to get too high, it would likely be pretty disastrous for the tank, so almost everyone who uses ozone uses an ORP controller to keep it in the desired safe range. Most reefers try to keep it between 300 and 380. 
As to what you should shoot for, I generally shoot for the midpoint for any recommendation like this, but your best bet is really to identify what your goals for ozone are. If they're simply to keep the water crystal blue all the time, I would set it to the lowest possible number that achieves that goal. I mean, you start at 300 and work my way up until I realize that goal. Most reefers will also agree that the best way to set your ozone generator and ORP controller up for the safest implementation is to use the generator's variable control to tune down the amount of ozone until your tank finds the ORP or low looking for, and then use the ORP controller as a safety backup to turn off the ozone if the tank ever goes over 380 or whatever safety set point you have. We decided not to run ozone on the BRS 160, not because it doesn't represent advancement in filtration water quality for the reef tank, but because most of us agree the benefits don't outweigh the cost, time, effort, and risks. And we also run carbon on the BRS 160, which has many of the same benefits. I would like to give a brief overview of the five main components we'd use if we were going to run ozone on this system to give a better understanding of how it would work with the ozone generator, air dryer, reactor vessel, carbon solution, and ORP controller. There are a few types of ozone generators out there, but for the most part, you're going to get a hobbyist grade version, often with an ORP controller built in or something designed for commercial uses. Ozone generators like the Enli are absolutely the lowest cost method of implementing ozone, typical to the lowest cost option of anything. Longevity and the quality of the unit will vary, but I think it's likely one of the more popular options because of the price point alone. The few times I've run ozone personally, I've always run the Ozotec units for a couple of reasons. All the tanks I've run also have a controller of some type, so I don't need a built-in ORP controller. They're also high quality commercial units I can trust to function properly, but more importantly, the one component that's likely to break over time, the Corona discharge cell is super easy to replace, meaning this thing is probably going to outlive the tank it's on and I'll never have to buy a new one. As far as ORP controllers, I'd personally get the Milwaukee because it's inexpensive and I trust them to function properly myself. Another option, which is really not much more and does a lot more for the tank, is the Reefkeeper Light Aquarium Controller, which is super inexpensive and pretty easy to program. Of course, if you're in the market for a full controller with cloud connectivity and endless options, the Neptune Apex is probably one of the most popular options and fits with the type of gear junkie that's using ozone in their reef systems as well. Another component is the air dryer. I wouldn't call this mandatory, but moist air reduces the ozone production, shortens the life of the corona discharge cell, has the potential to result in the production of nitric acid, which can corrode the system, as well as possibly add nitrate to the system. Considering all this, it's probably wise to dry the air. There are two types, starting with manual types, where there's just some desiccant the air flows through to dry the air. It will change color as it's depleted, and every now and then you need to bake the desiccant to remove the moisture. Other types are automatic dryers. If you hate maintenance like baking desiccant, then this is it. These are self-contained units which use a media to remove the moisture and automatically heat and dry the media to recharge it. Almost no maintenance. These come in single cartridge versions which periodically heat and recharge the media. The dual ones have a feature of switching between the two cartridge. When it's recharging one, it switches to the other. Before we get to the ozone reactor or vessel, I'd like to note that ozone is really hard on a lot of plastics, meaning it will completely destroy many types of fittings inside of days. You absolutely need to use a material known for ozone compatibility. We stock Kynar fittings and Flexiline tubing, both of which have excellent ozone resistance. One of the most popular Kynar fittings are the check valves, which are often installed before and after the ozone generator to keep the water out of the ozone generator during a malfunction or power outage and potential siphon issue. As to the vessel you run your ozone in, you basically have two options, a reactor design for the ozone, which are often pressurized to some degree, or a skimmer. Everyone has their own opinions as to what's best. I find both are completely capable of raising the ORP and cleaning the water, so for the most part, I'm not concerned from that vantage point. But my personal experience has been a good skimmer creates more ozone water interface with all the bubbles and works better than reactors I've tried, but I haven't tried them all. I have a few main concerns when selecting an ozone option, and that's making sure it has a method of removing ozone from the air, meaning a spot for carbon. A method of removing ozone-related byproducts from the water, meaning a spot for carbon on the water output. To a lesser degree, I want a method of controlling the flow of water through the reaction chamber so I can control the contact time if I want to. Most importantly, though, I want this whole thing to be as simple as possible. None of the reactors that I personally use have ever achieved all of these goals to my satisfaction. 
and due to the rarity of usage, there are just not many of them on the market. I've never used it, but it's possible this one from Reef Octopus might achieve all of these goals. End of the day, I prefer to use a recirculating skimmer that I have no intention of using to skim anything. The Skims SM122 is a good option. The skimmer is a super easy way to implement ozone and doesn't require an air feed pump because you can use the Venturi in the skimmer to draw air through the ozone generator. I recommend recirculating skimmers because their design has a water feed pump which allows you to control contact time and flow through independently the needle wheel pump or ozone injection. Increasing dwell time or adjusting flow through will likely allow you to use significantly less ozone and achieve the same results. Using less ozone makes it easier for the carbon to remove the ozone from the air and water. The nature of the recirculating design typically has a water return situated above the water level of the sump where it's much easier to make sure the water passes over a significant amount of carbon. To remove the ozone from the air, I'll typically modify the skimmer cup so it serves as a large cup for activated carbon. This has been very effective for me at removing ozone beyond my ability to detect it by smell. Ozone has a unique odor like a lightning storm that's pretty easy to recognize. If you want to be absolutely sure you're safe, there are ozone detectors on the market you could purchase as well. That wraps up ozone for the week. As always, I hope you picked up at least one new thing on ozone and reefing. And if you did, let us know with a quick thumbs up and subscribe. Big thanks to everyone for hanging in there with us for the last couple weeks while I got married. My wife and I appreciate your patience and we had a blast. We'll see you next week with week 29 of the BRS 160.